G'day guys, back again. We've got a VZ Commodore 3.6 litre that's come in for a dead misfire. And we've got the Autel on it. As you can see, P0205, injector 5 control circuit malfunction. So I've already tried clearing the codes and it comes back straight away because obviously it's a dead misfire. So what we're gonna do, the first thing we are going to do is pull the fuse out for the number five injector. We're gonna put a fuse loop in there and we are going to put a current clamp around it and see if we are getting anything at all. Uh, it's likely we're not, but we're gonna set it up and we're just gonna make sure and then we will decide what we need to do from there. Alrighty, we just pulled the fuse cover off and we can see here we've got our, uh, where are we, our 15 amp fuse for injector ignition odd so obviously this fuse does the injectors and the ignition coils for the same bank so i've put in a fuse loop i've got my pico current clamp on there and let's have a look at the scope so as you can see here our tall peaks are our ignition coils and our small peaks are our injectors so let me just pause that and hopefully you can see that pretty clearly but we've got ignition Injection, ignition, injection, ignition, nothing. And that's repeatable, so our injector is definitely not operating. We've got no component operation there. Obviously there's multiple factors involved there. We could have a failing injector, we could have failing wiring, um, could we have failing computer. So what we might do is, is bring up the wiring diagram and let's do that and see what we're gonna do first. All right, we're on the wiring diagram now. As you can see here is our number five injector. So we can see that this is the odd bank. This is the fuse we were testing from that powers these three injectors. Uh, and then we have a command wire from the PCM. So obviously if we have no component operation, we could have a couple of faults. We know we don't have a bad fuse, but obviously this wire here could be faulty. The injector itself could be faulty. And uh, this wire here, the grounding wire could be faulty or the PCM could be faulty. So. The way this is set up, it's actually a relatively easy way to prove that whole system. So if we do, if we put our scope here, we should be getting 12 volts because we have our fuse coming through here, 12 volts, 12 volts going down through the windings of the injector, the 12 volts comes out the other side with the key on and we should have 12 volts here. When the computer wants to operate that injector, it will ground that 12 volt wire. So if we put our scope here, we put the key on, if we've got 12 volts, we've basically, well, we've proved that the rest of this system is intact or it's got integrity. So we can do that. And then what we will do is start the car up and make sure we've got command from the PCM. And then we'll confirm whether we need to take the intake manifold off or not. All right, I just set it up anyway, guys. Got it running. I'm on the number five injector command wire there, and I'm also on the number three injector command wire, so we can see and compare. So we are on there now on the number five, our failing injector, and as you can see, we have got battery voltage. So that confirms to us that the wiring is definitely intact, and we have actually got no command from the computer at all. So. What I'll do is I'll plug it into the number three and I'll show you what it should look like. If I can do it with one hand. There you go. We've got our grounding, we've got our injector firing and I'll go back, I'll change it back over. And we have got nothing, we've got battery voltage. So. By having battery voltage there, we have proved that our wiring from the fuse to the PCM is definitely intact. In fact, I'll turn the car off. And I'll just put the key on. And you can see like we were talking about before, battery voltage. So one simple test, basically proved that whole system. And if we've got voltage there, our PCM should be commanding that, grounding that system, and it's definitely not. So we suspect there is a failing injector driver here. So unfortunately, by the looks of it, it's gonna need a new PCM. So we're gonna to speak to the customer, see what they wanna do, and if they wanna go ahead and get this one repaired or a new one in, 
we'll get it sorted out and then if they do want a new one hopefully we can pull this old one apart and see if there's anything we can see let's do that all righty there is the old one out we have got the new one on so we're going to jump on the ac delco website and we're going to get the card out connected and we're going to program this computer and i'll show you how to do it all right guys we're getting set up to reprogram the new ecu as you can see we got our battery maintainer on which you're always going to need whenever you do programming to avoid low battery issues we've got the cardac 3 over there connected to the car and we've just got the ac delco tds side up so we're going to get this set up get this programmed and we'll show you how it goes there we go the new cardac 3 plus in action in all its glory over there we are currently updating and programming the new PCM and I have to say a big thanks to Ben at Mount Auto Equipment who actually jumped on TeamViewer with me and helped me set up the Cardac 3 because had a bit of an issue getting it to connect to the SPS and um, what an absolute legend Ben is, uh, that's where I got my Cardac Plus 3 from so it just pays to buy it from the right place that you get support from so thanks once again Ben all right, programming is done. So the next step of the programming is we need to uh, link the BCM and the ECM and the PIM all together so we can get the immobilizer and the key connected to the ECM so it can start the car. Because at the moment it's programmed, but it's not linked and it will crank and not start. So we're just gonna go through that whole process. Uh, I, won't Im sh I won't show you, but I'm just gonna go through that because it's gonna be time consuming. Um, we had to get the original immobilizer code from Holden, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. But it's done, I'll do this, and I'll get you back over to the car once it's done. All right, I've put the code in, it's doing its thing. So let's see what happens. Please turn off the ignition key. Now I've got to walk around to it, because I've got it set up on wireless. Turn off the ignition key. Let's go back. Turn off the ignition key, okay. Please turn on the ignition key. Should probably just take the Verus over there, but uh, unfortunately it's on charge. So we are on, successful link. Please wait. All right, let's go over and clear the codes and we'll start the car. New beauty. We are completely running now. So, I'm just going to go for a drive and make sure this is 100% and the, the thing I did fail to mention to you before is that obviously this has got 220,000 kilometers on it so we did recommend a set of injectors anyway because at the end of the day they've never been replaced before and a, an injector that's partially failing and drawing too much current may cause a driver failure in the PCM anyway. So due to the age, we said, that, you know, if you're gonna spend the money on a new computer, we're gonna put a set of injectors in it and do it on in one hit and you don't have to worry about it after. So that is done. Uh, we're gonna go for a drive, make sure it's good. Um, the other thing I did wanna say is that, look, this, this was a pretty simple test of just, you know, sometimes when we get a fault in, we need to look at the, the design of the car. It's on the fuel system, obviously the injectors are under the plenum over there. So if we wanna do a resistance test on the injectors, we need to take the plenum off. We did that this time and checked the resistance and the resistance was good like it would have been. And what do we do? We put the plenum back on and then start the car up, see it's still running rough and then check the computer. Or the computer's right here. So quickly grab the wiring diagram. We know which wire is which, plug it in, do that simple test and we know what the fault is. So just goes to show that, you know, if we, if we get a fault in, we should jump on, find out how the system works and find out the easiest way to test it. So lucky for us, it was that fault to start with and already headed us in the right direction. So this car's fixed and I'm sure the customer will be happy to get their car back running nice and well. So thank you for watching, guys.